Facebook, YouTube, you're going to see the actual YouTube video, jump on the YouTube channel, be on Instagram, jump on the YouTube channel, GarmentCreations.com, that's YouTube.com slash GarmentCreations, just getting ready, going live, In today's live, we're talking about the pain of running your own business, okay, always at the joy, we're not going to talk about the pain so much, right, because there is real pains that come with running your own business. So today, I want to conversate, talk about some of those pains, right? So we're going to jump on YouTube, have a conversation. If you want to go live in the comments, you can jump on YouTube as well. Just making sure my microphone is all good. Say, yo, E, I got my order. Happy with the product. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. I hope you make some money with the product, right? Hope you make some money with the product. IG, we got some new designs right here launching on Friday. Getting ready for those. If you're on Instagram, let me know where you're joining in from. What is your city and state? Drop that down below. What city and state are you joining in from? And also let me know, man, are you coffee? or tea because i'm a coffee drinker man i want to know are you a coffee drinker or are you a tea drinker how are you rolling this morning coffee or tea let's talk about it I'm trying to get the focus right over here all right that's the button right there boom I'm trying to do it backwards ig what up let me know where are you joining in from instagram facebook youtube what's up what's up also share this live with somebody man share this live with someone Share this live stream with somebody. If you want to be in the comments, want to be interactive with us, jump with, jump in on the YouTube channel, GarmentCreations.com. I like YouTube.com slash GarmentCreations. But what's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, I'm Erasmus from Garment Creations. On this channel, you get tips and tricks to amplify your heat print business. So if you're new here again, consider subscribing. I would also appreciate if you can join the Facebook group. It's called Fire Up the Heat Press. So that's Fire Up the Heat Press on Facebook. And in that group, you can drop your work, ask questions, just talk to people doing this full time and as a hobby. Again, facebook.com slash fire up the heat press. Now that we got that intro out the way, let me know. Can y'all hear me? How's the volume? Can you hear me good? If you can hear me, let me know. If you cannot hear me, please do me the favor and let me know as well. Rob Beats, what up? Notification gang, I love it when the notification goes out. Shout out to the notification gang. Make sure you got your notification turned on. You know, so when your boy go live, I'm telling you, man, I'm trying to do this thing now, maybe once a day, all right? I mean, once a day, we'll try to jump live. There was a time, yo, I was going live every single day. If you remember June, I know you remember because June was there with us. We was live for about maybe two years every single day, man. And so that, that caused a lot of burned out, caused a lot of, lot of pain in life, right? Because like we spent a lot of time just growing the community online, growing the channel, was able to grow the Facebook community and into the way now it just basically runs itself. And now we have more time to, to get back on YouTube and start to build that, that platform back up. Spent some time with Instagram, got that up. Here's the thing, man. So the first thing here today, we're talking about the joy of running your own business, right? Can you hear me? You cannot see me. All right, so here we go. You should be able to see me. All right, so you should be able to see me now. Share this live stream with somebody. Share this live stream with somebody. First, I'm gonna say good morning to June. We got Levittown in the building. Who's over here from Levittown? Facebook user from Levittown. So it says Facebook user because I'm using StreamYard. And like Todd always say, right, like StreamYard doesn't agree with Facebook. So you got to go to Facebook, give it permission so we can see your comments. Or to skip all of that, just jump on the YouTube channel. And we'll be able to see exactly who you are. All right. 
But I see somebody from Levittown. Shout out to the Levittown user. I'm not sure who that is. Could be, I don't know, it could be any up. But so we are, I forgot what I was about to get into. All the way from Odessa, Texas. Ooh, I've been through there. Been through there. It's me. Oh, I know who's from Levittown. They just they just texted me. It's me. It's my wife. It's my wife. It's wifey. So, ah man, I was on the train. I was I was literally about to give y'all something this morning, right now, and I lost the train of thought. What we was talking about just a second ago. So it's Nita from Rain. Okay. Bay Area Cali in the building. Rob Beats in the building. Rob, man. That's my guy, Rob. I don't know, Rob. We got to link up, man. I never met you in person. Some of y'all YouTube folks, man, other content creators, we got to get together, get connected, get involved. Let's do more collaborations. You know, now that I'm jumping back on YouTube, I would like to, to do a lot more collab with folks, man. Like, you know, set up some type of podcast situation where we can just get to know where you're at in the business now. If you're interested in something like that, you know, we're thinking about bringing the Entrepreneur Social Podcast back out and all those things there, just so we can get back into the rhythm of YouTube again. You understand? But with that, we are running the business here, which is why we're here today, right? We're talking about, like, some of the struggles with running your own business, Right? So many people aspire to run their own operation. So many people want to be their own boss, right? Let me know in the comments. If that was your dreams before you start a business, say, oh, I want to get into business. I want to be my own boss. I hate this, this cubby life. I just don't like this nine to five life. And you want to do something for yourself, right? And like, honestly, for me, I never really sat here and said, oh, I hated my job. I never, honestly... I don't know of a job that I hated. I can't really, I can't really remember a job that I worked where I said like, oh, I hate this place. Because what I, what I know about me, if I hate a job and I know I'm not learning, I'm out of there, right? Like that's just the way I am personally for me. If I was doing something and I know there is no learning there, I'm not gonna elevate, There is, I'm just stagnant. It's just not for me, right? So. I can't really say I had a job where I just hate it. I just hate it getting up and going there. I'm a morning person, so I'm up every day by most people, except for today, right? The whole house was late because I didn't get up on time. I'm the alarm clock around here. So if I don't get up, that means everybody else is sabotaged for that day. So that's what we went through today. But usually I'm up early, so I never hated like working, right? But I always knew. I mean, that I wanted to be a business owner. I just knew that from a young age. I think I told myself that I think it was like 35. When I was turned 35, I wanted to own my own business. But I didn't know it was going to be a T-shirt business. I had no idea. You know, I grew up seeing my parents doing business. My mom was doing business in Africa at this time in Liberia. It's like she's selling the littlest thing she can sell just to make ends meet, right? So she's selling like, we have something that's called like, peanut ground pea candy that's like the peanuts they put together with sugar and that turns into candy my mom was selling that we got the coconut candy my mom was selling that like plantain chips my mom was selling that like i grew up around small businesses right like when i say small business in africa like small business is small business i mean people are coming outside or selling right in front of their house some folks are going to the market and when you go to the market in, in liberia like it's busy you know, like, so I was around business for the, to sell less, right? And then my dad, he also had a a refrigeration business. He fixed, I remember this, people used to always ask me, hey, what does your dad do? I said, my dad fixed refrigerators. Like, as when I was a young kid. So I was always exposed to that. So I knew, like, man, I was going to have a business. I told myself at 35, I'm going to be a business owner. Like, let me know in the comments, right? Like, did you... Actually, as a young kid, did you have those type of ideas, those type of dreams, or those type of visions of owning your own business, right? But I had, I had in my mind, say, you know what, I want to own a restaurant. 
And I want this restaurant to be in like a double deck building so I can put a club on the bottom of it, right? Because I'm like, yeah, man, I can be in entertainment and be in the restaurant business and all those things there. I've always knew I was going to be in business. And the age was 35, you know? I'm, I'm older than 35 now, you know what I mean? So we reached that and 37, you know, 37. I'm not old. I'm not old. And most people are like, I, yeah, you wouldn't even know I'm 37. But so what we talk about here, we got Philadelphia in the building. So I started my business, I mean, because like I said yes to a person and they said, okay, go ahead and do the thing. And I figured out how to print t-shirts. And now today, we're expert in the game. I mean, expert, like teaching people how to do the same thing. You understand? And this here was just from me saying yes. But fast forward, right? Seven years later, we're still here doing business, you know? And a lot of things has changed within the business. Here's some of the some of the struggles of being a business owner. Number one, it's, I mean, I'm gonna just talk about myself, right? Because one of the number one thing I realized as an entrepreneur right now is trying to stay focused, right? Like focus or discipline. You can like you can play with them two words, but I really I think I would say discipline, right? Like the number one struggle that I have or maybe I'm getting better at it now, or I had as an entrepreneur is developing discipline or just being disciplined, right? What do you mean by discipline? You might say like, I'm talking about just holding yourself accountable for what you say you would do. And then like really focusing on that one thing until it's done. And now when it's done, I'm the person, like I used to tell People are like, man, I'm just a builder. I like to see things built. And once it's built, I'm, I'm on to the next thing. And that's my issue, right? Like, once you build a thing, that doesn't mean, like, it's there. You know what I'm saying? It's just built. You understand? Know it's standing. Like, but in business now, because it's standing, that doesn't mean it's profitable. That doesn't mean it's sustainable. Like, there's a lot of things that you have to keep building on that one thing. You understand what I'm saying? And if you find value to this right now, man, go ahead, let me know in the comments. Drop some fire emojis in the comments. Smash some hearts if you're on Facebook. Smash the like button if you're on YouTube. If you're on Instagram, I want to see some hearts too, right? Like, those are those, that's like the first struggle that I had as a business owner, just finding that, that like dedication and being, not dedication, but being, being, being disciplined, right? Being disciplined and staying focused on that task. Like the whole word focus is just like focus on one course until success. That's what the word focus means, right? So instead of us being entrepreneurs, we know like we know a lot of things, you know, especially if you're a small business owner like me where you you wear one hat, but that hat is actually multiple hats. You understand? You are also the or in a business like mine's. I'm the, the salesperson. I got to be the one to tell people, yo, I make shirts. I got to be the one to market and tell people, yeah, I make shirts. I'm the one that built the website. I'm the one that, that that's doing the product. Like everything is just you. So you learn a lot. Okay. So because you learn a lot of skills, there's opportunity for you to branch off and do other things within that, right? Or if you were like me, you start whole new businesses because you think you got strength in this one thing so you think you can just do that everywhere else but one thing i know that's how you burn yourself out and that's how you really spread your your profit out there and the profit should really be going back into the existing business so that's like one of the main struggle that i had in the last few years and just spreading myself so thin and trying to run other like start start other businesses and not being disciplined to the one business right and that's just one thing i want to encourage somebody today if you're just starting off in this entrepreneurial life or you've been doing it for a while and you just seem it just seemed like things are not moving right maybe you're like me maybe you had you got yourself spread so thin maybe you are you are running the t-shirt business but then you're also running an event space right or you also over and over the t-shirt business, you have the event space and you also want to be a power washing company, you know, like, 
Or you know what? You say, oh, man, now I want to be, I'm going to have a photography studio. So you built a studio. You put all these equipments in there. All these things were real stories. Those are really what I did in the last few years. And those things did nothing but pull the money out the bank, get it spread it out, and you're not putting money back into the mean business that's really bringing money. And all those other businesses were being supported by the mean garment creation business. So, like, you just want to make sure you are disciplined in this entrepreneurial life. You understand? Yep, you're so right. Appreciate it. Drop some hearts for me if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook. I like to see all of that. And let me know in the comments, man, what are some of your struggles as a, a entrepreneur, right? Did you struggle with, with um being, being disciplined? Is discipline one of the struggles that you have in your business, right? Maybe you're not as bad as mine. Maybe you're just not disciplined with how you use your money. You know, like... That's also a thing that I struggle with, understanding, understanding that the money that comes in for the business is not really your money, you know, and being disciplined to know that, bro, that's not your stuff. Don't be touching it. Like the money that comes in there should be dedicated for the business, like, you know, not for you to put in your pockets. Like all those things there, man, takes discipline, okay? So the first thing I would say, man, figure out how you can be more disciplined. Set goals, stick to them, right? If you reach that goal, there's short goals, right? So there's short goals, there's long-term goals. If you reach your short-term goals, return to that same bullet point and add a long-term goal attached to that bullet point that you just reached the short-term goals and just keep building off of that. You know, this is me talking to myself right now. I'm literally counseling myself. I just happen to be looking at a camera, you know, and I tell you all the time, most of the time when I'm jumping on these lives or do these videos, I'm not pointing fingers. You know, I'm just reenacting what one of my mentors have told me or I'm just, yeah, I'm just, just telling you what I'm going through. You understand? So if you find value, man, go ahead and share the like button there. And also appreciate the appreciate the super chat over there, Ra. Appreciate the super chat, man. If you want to support your boy on YouTube, you can send a super chat on Facebook. You can also send stars too, right? Just show me appreciation that you're finding value to what we are doing here. It just helps the, the community get bigger. So we're able to then put that profit back into the channel. We're back on this YouTube thing, man. I'm trying to tell y'all we are 19 now. We need to get this thing up. Up. So if you're on Instagram, you should be jumping over to YouTube and subscribe it. All right. <laughs> to need custom transfers. If you need custom transfers, GarmentCreations.com, right? If you need custom transfers, jump over to the website, GarmentCreations.com. All right. So that was my first struggle there. Just finding, determined, being more, being more, what's it called? discipline okay discipline will be the first thing that we struggle with and then also ah this one here that i think i, th I think one well, well, most of our struggles with this part here right as an entrepreneur you you need also in the line of what i just talked about as an entrepreneur one of the things that i struggled with was being able to just know what you can handle right? Have a balance of what you can handle, especially if you are a solopreneur, right? Like myself, you understand? Like you can't take on more than you can bear, you know? And the Bible tells me God would never give you more than you can handle, more than you can bear. So like as a human being, we want to take on all of the jobs. We just want to say, yes, yes, snatch them in, bring them all in. It's a good tactic. I enjoy that. We learned this thing. Oh, I used to teach this thing at McDonald's. Is basically in the drive through right? The reason why some drive through you go through now, they should all have it where they have the cars. It's called pull forward. They pull the cars forward. And there's a reason why McDonald's started that drive forward thing. They have a second window now. They tell the cars pull forward. Because what I understand is when that wheels is spinning, that cash is coming in. Right, that's the that's the drive-through model of McDonald's. Period. So let's say the drive-through, you pull up in the drive-through, and the, and 
like the cars are just not moving. It just stuck. The same car been at the ordering window forever. I can guarantee you nobody is getting money in that McDonald's, right? Because the wheels are not moving. Because the wheels are not moving, you're not putting money in the drawers. That's why McDonald's had the second window to say, hey, pull forward. Because we can pull that one car over, we're able to get more cash into the next car and so on. And I say that because we, we want to take on all this stuff, but we need to understand that there's not so much we can do, right? Yes, we want to take in the cash. You know, that, that keep the wheels moving thing. Once you take in that cash now, I encourage people, go ahead, learn how to sell. Get the cash first. But... Can you really handle the workflow that comes with it? You understand? Sometimes, like, how can you manage all those things, right? Now, with DTF printing, it's a struggle. You understand? It's not for everyone. It's, <laughs> to be honest, it's like the workflow that comes with DTF printing as a solopreneur, it's actually terrible. You understand? It's actually terrible. And I don't want people to feel like, oh, like, oh, this is what I need to do. I need to get a printer and I need to go ahead and start doing this and offer transfers. That's cool. I want you to start your business. I want you to offer transfers to everybody, right? I want you to be a competitor. But I'm telling you right now, like, it sucks. Imagine, imagine this. You are the same person that's going to be marketing this these transfers. You're also the same person that's going to be taking in the custom orders. And you're the same person that's going to be managing the artwork because the customers don't manage the artwork. Customers just don't understand the fact that you need transparent PNG. Background cannot be on there. There is no white involved. The printer prints white. All those things there, customers is not doing it. So you got to be the one to manage it, right? Customers send you a JPEG image that is has a background and it's low res. You are the one managing that. Right. So by the time you can actually get the print, the artwork onto the printer, there's already a process of eight hours from the email. You, you emailing the customers, them getting back to you. The process is terrible. Right. I'm, I'm being completely honest. You understand? So like. People are running out there to buy these machines now because, yes, it's a, it's a good shiny thing. It's a new thing. Everybody's doing it. So you go ahead, you buy one of those. You invest in it. These companies sell you this thing. They market it very well. You now got yourself a nice piece of shiny equipment. But then you also got to be the one to worry about the maintenance of that shiny piece of equipment. Because truth be told, man, those companies are selling us stuff and they're not being responsible to really help us through the troubleshooting process, right? Because most of the time after the sale, conversation is dead. You understand? And that's one thing myself I'm trying to get better with, like, man, like, as a one-person team, what other things can you do to make the communication flow better? Yes, I am. I'm struggling in that part in my business, right? Because it's just me, right? How can we do, how can I be the one to come on here and create the content? How can I be the one to do everything else? So there's a lot of things that's happening in the background, trying to build a team and all of that. But, like, finding someone to take on some of that work is a real thing. Like, that's a real pain in, in some people's businesses, right? Because who are you going to hire? Can you trust this person? You know, if, especially if you're working from home, like, do you trust people coming into your crib to help you do some things? Like, some, like there's a lot that goes behind this entrepreneurship, y'all. So I just want you to start thinking. I think we should share more of, like, the, the failures than the successes. You know, we're so big with putting a shiny, glorious thing on the internet because that's what we want people to see. But the struggles that we go through as business owners is even more than the success. <laughs> you understand? Because we go through the struggles, we're able to be successful at the end. But we got to share more of the, like, the pains, you know? Like, a, a question would be like, man, what is the biggest failure you had in your business and how did you overcome that? That's how I want to, like, that's where I want the conversation to start. You know, I want you to, oh, how did you make $10,000 and how can I do it too? You can do $10,000 a month by hustling, hustling hard. That's it. That's like the secret. I mean, you, you got to look at the numbers. If you see, oh, man, I'm only making 6 k a month this year. What can I do to get to 7 k Boom. What can I do to get to 10 k That's hustle. It's hustle. There's like nothing else. There's no secret magic wand. I can't sit here and say, 
I don't know what to say. Like, whatever the musician, the the magic people say these days, I can't even get it right. Right? Those those things there, man. It takes hustle, y'all. Like, it's hustle. It's only hustle. Like, come on. Don't get fooled and somebody tell you, oh, you can buy this machine. Like, come on. They, I'm just I'm just over it with the buying machines and all of that, man, because I've learned how to run my business without buying another piece of equipment. You know, I know how to how to partner up with people to get things ha- to happen, right? Like, there's a lot of things you can do as entrepreneurs so you can take some of that work and that weight off of your shoulders because, God, all right, my shoulders ain't that heavy. They ain't that big. I ain't as big and strong as Rob Beats, you feel me? Or A Dubs Production. Them dudes are strong. I'm just bony and scrawny over here trying to make my way in the gym every day and be consistent and disciplined there. Pray for me. You feel me? But yeah, man. There's just some of the things there that we need to pay attention. Oh, uh, Ross say he has a software training. I know he has a software training probably with Omniprint because he's got that Omni GTF. Good luck with that one, bro. Good luck with that one, bro. Staying focused just as you said. Yep. Yes, bro. You got to be business strong. You know, you got to be business strong. You got to be. And when I say business strong, understand, <laughs> man, business strong, when, I, when I'm saying like you got to be business strong, that means you got to be business strong in here mentally. Knowing that the folks, the Bible says the, <laughs> the prophet is not respected in his own home, right? And I say that because people expect, you expect your your neighborhood to just ride with you or they're not supporting me or your family is not supporting you, this, that, and third. So you're over here folding up. Now you're giving up. You're not business strong. You know, in order for you to be business strong, you have to be in there mentally and understand that nobody is here to hold your hands, bro. Nobody is here, sis, to really walk you through this thing. You have to hustle. You have to hustle to get the information. You have to hustle and put in the work, right? I can give you the information all day, but the execution is on you. That's the issue that we have. People are just not executors, right? And that's just not just in business. I work with plenty of people, like in my church life. Like people are just not executors. We got to execute. Y'all like be a finisher. Learn how to finish the thing and say, finish him. Like be a scorpion in the game, man. You understand? Like be a scorpion. Go after it and get it. You feel me? Got to be business strong. Don't expect people to, to just hand you things. There's no handouts. No handouts. Now, man, and if somebody helped you out for a little bit, shout out to all the partners that have helped me out, helped Garment Creation out to get to a, where we're at, to a little level, to bump up off the off the um, the rail a little bit. Some of the partners and mentors that actually pushed us off the cliffs, right? To be able to actually do this on our own type thing. We didn't just... Like, yes, you can make the decision to do it, but you need the accountability, right? So the next thing I would say as an entrepreneur, like, get yourself around people that are going to hold you accountable, you know? And, man, accountability is key, you know? Not, not like, this is the reason why people have jobs, nine to five. And the reason why nine to five is important because you need people to tell you what to do. You need people to hold you accountable because you didn't do what you said you would do. Even as your own boss, as your own, like you're paying yourself and all that, you have, might have employees, but like somebody got to be on top of you. You understand? Like who's telling you you're wrong? Who's telling you don't do this? You understand? Shout out to my wife and every, like all my partners, man. Like people that has been there for me, man. Like people that has been helping me out. You feel me? My folks over there, Annie up. Like, those are people that was able to, to encourage me. Like, yo, E, man, like, come on, bro. You can do this. Come on, bro. You're not disciplined. Come on, dude. You don't need to do that. That's accountability. You need that accountability. You know, because, like, the accountability also tighten up your vision. It gets you more focus. It gets you, like, in there. So you know you're not uh, looking at everybody else. That's one thing that I struggle with. That's why I had to get out of some of these Facebook groups. I had to get out of some of these communities because, like, 
like trying to instead of staying focused, you worrying about what everybody else is doing. Now, when you want to do this thing, you don't do it because you saw somebody else already did it. You're like, oh, I can't do it. They already did it. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> you understand? Oh, I can't, I can't, I, I can't sell custom stuff because Sue Lee over there already is doing it. You're terrible. Like, because we're so focused on what other people are doing, we're not focusing on ourselves. So it's always good to have this accountability partners that's gonna check you, like, dude, like, should you really be looking at them? You know, one thing, one thing I used to talk about with um with Annie Up and Kyle all the time is like people on the internet, we show off like we show it like because it's shiny, we put those shiny things, right? Anybody can make things look shiny on the internet. You're not there. We're showing you this exact shot. Like right now, I'm showing you just this. You can see just this shot. You don't see anything else in here, right? I can make this as shiny as I want. I can make this thing fancy, throw all the lights in the background, move all those things there, make it the best content spot ever. But come on, like, are you in here to sell content or are you in here to do a business? You understand? Like, who's going to tell you, like, dude, you don't need all of that. You feel me? Just give the people the sauce and let them find value. Accountability, man. I see people doing things on their own because they don't have accountability partners. They don't have people to hold them accountable. You understand? So we're just doing things. I see people on the internet just doing things, like, not just in business only, right? In my personal life, I see people, like, just hanging out. I'm like, dude, who's your mentor? Like, who's holding you accountable? Because you're just doing anything on the internet. You understand? We got to be careful. We got to get with people that are where we want to be, right? That's the thing with finding accountability partners. Find somebody that actually, that you can actually trade places with and be comfortable, right? Like, a mentor is somebody that's in a place where I can say, bro, you take my bank account, I'll take your bank account, and I'll be cool. That's a mentor, right? Somebody where I can say, man, you're going to coach me through this, how you got your bank account this way. You mean accountability. I can't, I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> it's just me. God help me. But accountability, I can't have an accountability partner that's, a business mentor or a business accountability partner, but you're not in business. You know, I'm sorry. It's just me. You know, maybe like, I honestly feel like you can't teach me a thing that you haven't done. I I just, I, I don't know if I'm wrong. Like, I just, you just can't, you know? So that's why I need, you need to find accountability partners that are in the same line with the vision of where you're going. You understand? Not just anybody, right? In order for you to build a t-shirt business successfully, you have to follow somebody that have done it. You understand? In order for you to be a good marketer, you have to study somebody that's doing it. You understand? Like, we can't, I can't get marketing skills from a, yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't yeah, I, I, you just got to follow somebody. I don't want to go there. You, you got to follow somebody that, that has been where you want to be. That's how I look at it. So listening is hard when you are doing it by yourself. You have to wear so many hats. It's true. You know, you have to wear a lot of hats as entrepreneurs. You got to do it because you the one that said you was going to be a business owner. You the one that set, set yourself up to be an entrepreneur. We can't feel like the overwhelm, yes, it's real for you to feel that way, that people aren't supporting you because it's a real feelings, but it can't be the reason why you stop moving. It just can't. Because people are going to let you down all day long. Your mom's going to feel you. Your dad's going to feel you. Your business owner's going to, a partner's going to feel you. Your, your friends are going to feel you, right? Like, are you going to let yourself feel yourself though? You can't control what these people do. You can't control you. That's it. So that's what I worry about. I control me, what I do, where I go, <laughs> what I say. It's all controlled by me. So that way, when I say it, it's sad. I can't take it back, right? Like those things there, I just take it to be important as an entrepreneur. But again, there's a link involved down here. There's a link down in the description we have a virtual training happening this Saturday. This Saturday, for people that are 
thinking about starting a t-shirt business, right? And you say, because I get the question all the time, like your email, I see you've been doing this for a while. You like you started this thing here in the closet. We see that you're still consistently doing it. How can we do it? You know, how can we f- help you? How can you help us? You understand? It's not no magic trick. There's no secret sauce here, to be honest, right? Like I told you, really, it's hustle, right? It's hustle being creative and marketing yourself and just knowing how to sell. Those are the things that I want to be giving you, right? I want to be introducing you to this Saturday here. So if you're interested in being a part of that class, you can jump in. Link is down below. Grab your tickets right now. For today only, it's just $27, right? You know, so this way here, Saturday morning, you get yourself set up. It's virtual, so you can jump in anywhere. Just grab your computer. I would recommend you find yourself a nice corner. You know, set clear your schedule for that day. There's folks that's already signed up. They already know you got to clear your schedule up, man. Grab yourself a laptop because he's coming in with a lot of energy that day. And we're going to be going. We're not keeping time. We're not keeping clocks. None of that because I'm just going to bring everything that I know for you. So you can now start making yourself an extra $500 to $1,000 in your business. Or you can top it off and start making exactly five grand to 10 grand a month right from home. You understand? So I want to break all of those down to you again. If you're interested in being a part of that class, go ahead. You can hit the link down below in this video if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Or if you're on Instagram, you can just come in the word biz. Come in the word biz on the, any video on my Instagram, and we're going to send you the link. And here's the thing, right? So people ask me, like, somebody hit me all like, day. E, man, you got this automation thing going on on your channel. How did you do that? I just got information. I sat in the master class with one other marketer that was doing it, and I show you, bro, how you do this? And I pay money for that information now. It's like having an employee on my on my social media. You can just comment a thing, and I'm able to just have all the information that I need pre-made, and then it sends you out the link. You know. So now, when people on my Instagram are like, "Dude, what's this biz?" I come in a master class. I come in this because that's the employee that I virtually added onto my site. So now I can get the help that I need, and all of this is done through what is it called, mini chat. Mini chat. Okay, so if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and try, try out some automation on your, your channel, man. But you got to have a website to link people to. All right. And man, one of the one of the things that I, I learned early in, we're going to probably end this live soon. I learned early in the game, right, was to have myself somewhere to send people to. Okay. I see entrepreneurs today, we're struggling, trying to manage our business, trying to manage our sales. We're wondering why we're not making money because we actually don't have a website to send people to. The only way you can make money while you sleep is to have a a platform where people can go to where you are sleeping, right? You can't, I mean, you can do it. Maybe you can do it. Maybe you guys are doing it, but I struggle with building a business in the DM. I struggle with like actually reaching everybody in the DM. Like, oh, here goes the invoice. Here, here's the link. Once you pay this link, come back and tell me this and I'll send you the product. Like you can't run a business like that. You have to have you a website. You just send that link, post that link anywhere. Somebody just click that link and then they go to do their thing while you're sleeping. You understand? So for people that are trying to get into this thing here, you think like, oh, I can just do this in my Facebook, Instagram, and then people just DM me and I send them the information, the link. You got to have a website. You can't run your whole operation just for answering DMs. What time do you have to answer the DM to then send the invoice, to then check the artwork, to then print the job, to then ship the job? Like, come on. Put some of that on the website. Add some automation to it and have your business going. All right? So, again, Masterclass this Saturday. We also have an ebook that just released too, right? So maximize your success with a heat press and heat transfers. It's the name of the heat book. So you can go ahead, hit the link down below as well. You just download the ebook for like seven bucks. It's not nothing major. I just want you to have the information. But because it took time for me to put it together, I'm going to charge you something, right? So for about seven to nine bucks, you'll be able to get a copy of that ebook instantly. So just hit the link down below again. You'll be able to get a copy of that PDF. All right, so if you got any questions, man, I'm open for some Q&A right now while I get these transfers ready for shipping.
So my wife has been my biggest supporter. I thank God for her. That's super big, super big. Gotta have those support systems. So you go ahead, make sure you smash the like button one time for me. Make sure you hit some hearts. If you found value to this, share the live with somebody else. We also have some single color transfers available. So yesterday was $2 Tuesday. I actually haven't changed the price yet. So if you need some transfers, you can still get our single color transfers from the website. Again, garmentcreations.com. You can get them for two bucks. So this is the shirt we printed yesterday on yesterday's live in God's hand. That's a dope design right there. You can grab your transfer, you grab your shirt. So for about five to seven bucks, this shirt was customized. And now I can resell this shirt right here for 15 to 25 bucks. You understand? So I went into the glasses store this morning to the eye doctor trying to get myself situated because it's been a minute with these glasses. The lady's like, oh, what do you do? I said, oh, yeah, we, we sell custom apparels and heat transfers. And she says, oh, it's like, what's on your shirt? I said, yeah. She said, how much will be for that shirt? I said, 25. She said, oh, that's very reasonable. You know, people, we think like, I could have told that lady 10 bucks. I could have told that lady 15. But I went high first, right? I shoot high. Okay, so here's a strategy for you to do with, with pricing, right? So people struggle with pricing all the time. And instead of us like shooting high with our price first, we shoot low. So then the customer is, is always going to try to work you in on some deal. Like that's the that's the, the human nature of us. Immediately you tell somebody the price, because they're not business savvy, they're not business mature, they're not business strong, they're going to struggle with your price a little bit. Right. But here's the thing I call I ask about I, I care about prices. If I'm not comfortable paying that price, I'm just probably not gonna make that price my on my product. Right. So until you're comfortable paying that price, you shouldn't be charging that price. Because when somebody tells you, if you tell somebody 25 bucks and you yourself, you know, like, ooh, 25 dollars is expensive for that shirt. And you they can sense in your expression, like, oh, you yourself, you know that's too expensive because of how you responded. Okay, so I shoot high, 25, because I know for real, for real, I want to sell the shirt for 15 to 20 bucks. But I'm going to tell them 25, because if they say yeah, I win big. But if they say no, I'd be like, man, you know what? I can do it for 20 bucks. You know, I'll do it for 20 bucks. Or let's say they wanted to group a bunch of shirts, right? So usually they would say, oh, that's the price of one. Oh, that's how I actually saw it. So yeah, somebody will ask you like, oh, how much for one custom shirt? And I still don't know. I repeat that. So you mean one shirt? They're like, yeah, I said it'll be about $25 to $30. And then I see their face and I was like, oh, but what, what's the purpose of the shirts? How many shirts do you need? Oh, I was thinking about maybe 15 to 20 shirts. And then you can sit back and be like, okay, even though I said 25, I think I really want to, I think I'd be good if I give them 15 a shirt because they're getting 15 shirts, right? So at the end of the day, you do the math, it's quantity, right? Now you got, you got a good amount of money. You feel me? So always set that thing high, but be okay with stepping down a little bit because that's where really that's where the customer really are comfortable paying. Know where your customer are comfortable paying at. You know, know where it is. Set search the market. Know where competitors are charging. You know, if your competitors are out there charging ten bucks a shirt, and you understand like, man, I can't do this for ten dollars because you pay seven dollars already on the shirt, and now you gotta account for it your overheads, these lights being turned on, your machine being turned on, how long it's going to take you to actually load the shirts and press the shirts, all those things there you got to take account off, right? So then all those got to go into your pricing, set a percentage. Your overhead might be 15%, 15% overhead on everything, yeah? You charge 15% on everything that comes in to take account of these lights being turned on, the space that you're using in your house. Like all those things there are real like business things that you need to take account of. You got to be business strong. All right. I hope you all found value, man. And I need to know if you guys are finding value. That's the only way I can keep going. If nobody's commenting, nobody's finding value, then I can't keep going. Stevie, Stevie. What's up, Stevie? Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. Appreciate Stevie, man. Stevie's always engaging with me on Instagram, on social, on YouTube. I love the engagement, you know, just by you commenting shows us like yes at least one person seen this post or one person did this you feel me so some hearts i love the hearts it's just different printing what's up with you my guy 
it's just different printing. I don't be knowing where you're at now. I can't even say my man from Philly because my man being Philly, he be in Atlanta. He's got shops in both cities. You feel me? Appreciate y'all, man. All right. So meanwhile, I've actually got some, I actually got a lot of work to do. So these transfers right here need to get chopped down. They need to get chopped down. I think somebody took the scissors yesterday. Okay, let's get this out the way. And this design right here, and we have some customs going out. Got some customs going out here. So this here is one of the big sheets. Because this here is the big gang sheet, right? People ask all the time, oh, how big is your gang sheet? So right now we're doing the, the biggest we can do right now is the 22 by 60. So I got 22 by 60 gang sheets available that you can get. If you're on Instagram, you can just custom, comment the word custom. We'll send you the link to these, right? So you can comment the word custom on any video, maybe not this live video, but any video on my feed. We'll send you the link to be able to upload your own custom artwork. But yeah, so this one here, this is one of our stock designs that's going to be releasing on Friday, okay? And it says, take care of yourself. A nice design there. Shout out to our graphic designer over there on Instagram. Hello. What is it? I forgot her Instagram thing. I got it. Dang, I forgot her Instagram. It's hello something. Hello. Hello, bright days. Hello something. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm terrible. Okay. Another custom right here. All right, this one needs to get shipped out today. Another custom right here. Simple color, one color joint. That's actually a two color one there. That's the gray shadow. So this here is our 22 by 12 gang sheet, right? Usually, if you choose the 22 by 12 gang sheet, we're going to, even if you upload one, one design, we're going to spread them out in a way that you are able to maximize your, your, your value that you give us, right? So if you, you're paying, I'm not sure what the price is for these from the top of my head right now, but whatever you pay on this, we're not gonna just send you one image. We're gonna make sure we fill up that page with as many images as you need, or you can get. So down here, I could have done another one of these, but I thought it'd be wise for them to have some left chest logos, maybe three of them so they can be able to try it out somewhere else, right? So that's what we, when we say free setup, this is your free setup. You upload your PNG and we'll take care of the rest. Just make sure it's a PNG with a transparent background. I'm dropping stuff, okay? So then let's go on that. We got this one here. It's another. This is here was the 12 by 22 again. Okay. Now this one here, they uploaded it. This is custom neck tags. They uploaded the neck tags. They actually did the layout. Okay. This person did the layout themselves. And when you're doing stuff like this, these little sizes, I would recommend you do it yourself. You know, this is the this is the time consuming part with DTF. Like all this here takes time. So I always would recommend customer, if you're gonna order a gang sheet, you know, take the second, set up your gang sheet and just upload it. So it's easy for us and it's faster to get your stuff out the doors too when we don't have to do all of the different things, right? Remove the background. Like I would remove the background from some of your artwork. I don't mind removing the background if it's taking me more time than what I can actually put into it, then I'm gonna send you an email and say, hey man, the artwork you sent is not print ready. But most of the time, I will remove what I can. And if it's still not print ready, I gotta put more time into it, I'm gonna reach out to you. All right, so that's that. We also have, where are they? Yeah, so there's more. I can't show that yet. That's a Friday design there going out. I need to find my scissors. Y'all give me one second. Let me find my scissors. I'll be right back in about two minutes. Not even. Oh, 
Oops, right here. Sometimes when you, when y'all don't do y'all gang sheet right, I'll add in extra images just so I can save up, right? So this is my logo right there. I just threw it on there just because there was a piece of spot right there, right? So if you're gonna send us a gang sheet, make sure all the space is covered. Or else I'm gonna try to sneak some stuff in there because you know you gotta maximize the space. You're gonna pay the same price no matter what. So might as well fill it up. No space get left alone. Just like Philadelphia. There is no parking lot get left being left alone in Philadelphia here. They're building on everything. There's a scene where I have to live by your gang sheet. Don't leave no space available. No parking lot gets left alone in Philly. They're all becoming homes. Sometimes because I gang them up so tight. I have to like maneuver my way to cut it, you know? And sometimes I try to lay it out in a way where it's easy for you to lay it on your sheet, on your shirts and cut them. So do I do screen printer transfers? We have stock screen printer transfers. Right now we're setting up, getting things ready to be able to do custom screen printer transfers. All right, so we're still maybe about a month away from that, you know, but yeah, pretty soon we'll be able to take your orders for custom screen printing transfers. Hey, 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 Palaya. Palaya, I still can say your name. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Como esta? I can't even roll up this thing correctly just right now. Where's the rubber bands? Where is the rubber bands? Rubber band. Oh, I dropped them everywhere. I wanna open up the bag upside down. And there's rubber bands everywhere. Cha. So I'm good. I see you're good. I'm watching, watching, watching your content. Even though, I mean, I see you got you got an English channel now. But what she does is all her content is she's able to niche down and was able to corner the Spanish market. And it was helping a lot of our Spanish people there get into this crafting world. And that's beautiful. I want to cut this down a little bit more so I can fit it in the smallest package. Boom. The key here, y'all, transparent background. That's the fastest way to get your transfers out the door. Transparent background.
these baskets keep us organized, y'all. Took this idea from another transfer company that was using those baskets, and I'm like, ooh, I like that idea. So, of course, what do we do? We was inspired to do the same thing. I'm not going to say we copy because people don't like that word. Oh, you copy. No, I was inspired <laughs> to do the same thing and say, why? Well, I'm going to use those baskets, too, and see how I can stay more organized. That's what you got to do in business, man. I don't like the word copy. Y'all don't like the word copy, so we ain't copy it. Store it like an artist. <laughs> Still like an artist. You ever read that book, Still like an artist? So the book I had on audio. I read it on audio. Audio book. Cause I need me an audio book. <laughs> I can't be sitting down too much. The only thing I sit down to read like that is the Bible. And sometimes even that is on audio. <laughs> You feel me? So, still looking hard. It's, it's a good read. Here it is. So, this design here is 10 and a half, right? So, it fits. It's a good design for a front image, right? So people be like, oh, how big are those? It's a, it's a 10 and a half. It's an adult size image. Feel me? So this transfer right here will be available Friday. New design on Friday. New design launching on Friday. Let me know. Are you interested in this design? Are you interested? Are you interested? Take care of yourself, man. Take care of yourself. Challenge myself, man. Get back on my daily YouTube lives. That's my challenge. Can't guarantee it though, but that's the discipline we talked about earlier, right? Finding that discipline. Rest of them, rest of them, rest of them is some weird. Ready for shipping on those. Rest of these. Friday's lunch money. This is Friday's lunch money right here, y'all. Make sure you jump on the see what this. I challenge you. Sent my order from a week ago. Wow, we got orders from a week ago. If you if you are on a custom right here's the thing our customs custom designs like these custom transfers right now we are really a week like seven to ten days to be honest 
You understand? So, and it says that in the product listing, it tells you the turnaround time. It's a challenge here. I see people, like, maybe we're not reading the description good enough. I'm not going to sit here and take all the blame. It says seven to ten days. You know, seven to ten days. If you're in the seven-day mark, I'm sure your order is in production ready to go. My coffee got cold. Yeah, I feel like I got coffee in my glasses. I can see it. Big shout out from London. So we in the industry must absorb all the knowledge and you do have it. I appreciate the I appreciate you tuning in for some of these knowledge every time I jump on, Stevie Steve. Appreciate that. Appreciate y'all Instagram, but I'm about to shut this off. I think I've done my time now. We're one hour in. Maybe we'll jump in later on. But again, we talked a little bit about some of the struggles with running the business, right? Finding that that um discipline was one of the struggles for me. Disciplining yourself. And then just knowing that you can't handle everything on your own, prioritizing, you know, or saying no to some things. Basically, like learning how to sell over everything, right? If you can sell, you can keep them wheels moving. The McDonald's method of drive through McDonald's is they just want them wheels to move. That's why they say, oh, pull forward. Any McDonald's I pull up to and they don't have that tactic, if I'm sitting still, you're not pulling my car forward. I immediately you can ask my wife, I'm shaking. I'm like, oh my God, they're getting this all wrong. You're not getting sales. Like you're not moving. If you, if those cars are not moving and drive through, you're not getting sales. All right. So like that's what you got to do. You got to keep them sales coming in. And the best way to do it is just by knowing how to sell, know how to market yourself, how to tell your story. All those things, there are things that I had to develop, you know. And then you'll find your 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 strong. Your strength, right? It's going to say your strong suit. You'll find your strength, and then you just double down on that, you know, and then find some help, outsource some things, and then the last thing is just find accountability partners, people that are going to hold you accountable for the things that you are not doing or the things you said you would do. One of my bigger taxes of, of um, holding myself accountable, I set dates. So then when I set the date, I put the date out. So unknowingly, most of y'all are my accountability partners, you know, and because I put the date out, I hold my, it, like, it's almost like, dude, you put it out there, millions of people have seen it, even if it's not millions, right? I got that in my mindset, like, dude, once you put it on the internet, there's millions and billions of people that's going to see it, and now those people are going to hold you accountable for you to not do it. Right? So like, I usually just, that's my tactic. I just throw a date out there. I tell somebody about a date. Or I would make the flyer and I just just I just put something out there in the world so I can hold myself accountable now to say like that. I already said I would do this. People are already seeing it. Then when people start paying, right? People start buying tickets, people start jumping in the for this let's say this master class this weekend on Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. And you can jump in today for just 27 bucks. Just go ahead and hit the link down below in the description, or you can go to training.garmentcreations.com. But to be in that, we're Literally just, yeah, just be a part of that. I don't even know where, where I was going with it. You know what I'm saying? But that means I'm done talking. I'm out of here. I'm about to actually finish up my work, get ready for the post office, all those things there. All right? It's 9, 11, oh, it's 11, 38. It's almost noon. It's time to go. All right, y'all. Until next time, keep firing up the heat press. I'll see y'all later. Peace. IG, what up? Instagram, it's just me and you now. Facebook, they're out of here. YouTube, the folks are out of here, all right? But I'm out of here too, Instagram. I'm sorry. I gotta go. I gotta go. But I gotta go right now. <laughs> Please don't leave. I'll be coming right back.